This match review comes to us from Mr. Rumble Roses, who has 2.1k hours in the game of Dead by Daylight. So over double the expertise in hours that I expect people to know how to macro and micro pressure the map. So know how to generally pressure chins, have quick chases, that sort of thing. Uh, you are playing Doctor, Doctor Shockter, which is a very like middle of the pack killer. He got some recent quality of life updates, but kind of serves as a very, like, he's just an okay killer. I think unfortunately for Doctor, he kind of has to be. It's like a, like a, like Doctor being super strong would be obnoxious. <laughs> There's a lot of characters like that, like Legion in the game. A perfect example of like characters that like, if you made them more strong, they would be so frustrating and annoying. But if they're, you make them too weak, they're not worth playing. And I think Doctor's in that zone too. Like he has really good like info, really good ability to find survivors and has uh good anti-loop. The problem is the good anti-loop is kind of like ping <laughs> based. <laughs> like big dictates a lot of how well your power works um so he's he's okay but he's definitely not a super strong killer so that may be working against you um you're on yamaoka uh not death pagoda but the family residence uh which is in both forms kind of a like a wider map uh one is like a football field map and the other one's just like a, a long ways map um both of which can be hard for like a character without movement uh a movement ability to pressure so that may be working against you. So let's take a look at your hands and your bikes. Okay, we're doing double aura, it looks like. Because the first one's the aura one, but I didn't see what the other one was, but it's also a restraint. So it's we're doing double aura. You're doing double aura, which restraint, I, I like restraint. Um, I don't know if double restraint is the move though. Um, there's a, a lot of great options on Doctor though. You have uh, discipline. Discipline's always great, purple discipline. Uh, discipline's probably like his like discipline and range are probably like your best options uh in terms of like doctor that's like the really really strong combo the iridescence are not like meme add-ons they're actually pretty nice um so those are some options that you can also run uh your build is a screen build um which is fun as like a gimmick but like may suffer in terms of effectiveness um especially thwack which centers around breaking things and you your whole thing is i shock you so you can not throw throw or you know interact with the thing that i would be breaking you may have a little bit of anti-synergy going on here um friends of the end can be fun because like you can f you know you can get somebody exposed and even if they like try to hide from you you can, <laughs> you can static blast and find them um yeah keep in mind this is a gimmick build like the screen gimmick is fun but like it's not effective Especially on a character that's already not that great, so I may not. I'm surprised you run at least run like Dead Man or something. Something that would at least synergize that's effective with them. Then again, it's not as good as it used to be. This is one of those characters, honestly. When you do a static blast like that, this was a really bad static blast because you're doing it against the wall. So the whole idea of static blast is not only to find survivors, but to raise the madness level by a full tier. If you didn't know this, shock therapy only raises the madness level by a half tier, whereas uh, static blast raises it by one full tier, one full madness level. Um, so not only is it a is a is it a tool to locate the survivors, it is also something to raise the madness level and ergo make them waste time. Um, so the fact that you use it when you're like up against a wall like this means that even if you hit people, you're not going to be hitting a lot because half of your power is essentially being blocked by the wall back here. So don't don't do that. Try to catch as many people as possible in more of a central area with it instead of up against the wall. There's no reason to dry kick a gen this early, like no reason. Like this gen barely has any progress. You would get more value here from having a quick and efficient chase with whoever was just working on this and then kicking it after the hook. That'd be much more efficient than like giving her a head start by try kicking the gen. She was over there. You were right. Oh, there's just two people here. Never mind. <laughs> you did hear the sable and you, and you got the infectious, so you know where she's going. Yeah, if you had nowhere to hide, you could kind of like set up the chase, you know. I can see that. Why is she doing that in front of you? I do like the choice to kind of just give free madness there. Why not? 
you fall field of view. Why is Adam there? <laughs> Why is Adam over there? What is he doing? <laughs> what was that? Is that a BM? What was that supposed to be? I feel like this Adam is a very experienced in the game. I don't mean any offense to them. I'm just kind of chilling. It's just like, it's a confusing pick because like you benefit so much from leaving pallets up as this character. Because you can shock and prevent them from revolting it. So like you don't have to break pallets as much. That'd be like running Thwack on like Xeno. Like your whole thing is like hitting over and around pallets with the tail attack. So I wouldn't run Thwack on them either. I know it fits, fits the gimmick part of the build, but it doesn't really fit the character. That weapon is really cool, the recolor of this. Nice. I'm gonna say this with like, as the most respect I can, I, I mean to you and how you're taking advantage of the situation. This team is not very good. They're like not paying attention. Yes, we are Demodog. Match reviews are every Monday. Every Monday. Hopefully you're doing well. Like, they're just like running into you and like not paying attention like at all. It's like kind of depressing. Match read the survivors, literally. They're just playing so poorly. Like, they're so grouped up and they're just reacting so late to things. <laughs> That's also why the uh, range add-ons are nice, because you would have shocked her there if you had it. Usually people would do like one of the purples and then the range add-on, especially like this one, for that reason. By the way, if you're ever confused what level somebody is, the, the actual like HUD icon changes based on what level they are. So like, even if you're like an in-between tier of madness it'll stay one direction and then when it hits the next one it'll it'll switch the uh, animation on the hub you see it's still it's still the same animation even though they just shocked and see how it just changed the static that means she's at uh she's at uh tier three that in between which just meant 2.5 where it didn't change so use that to keep track of what menace you have on other players. You're very much over familiar with this choice. Do you see the full stack? Yeah, that's what that that little like TV static animation you see right there on her. I know it's kind of blurry because of the pixelation. Um, that's that's full menace. Okay, you know to leave this chase, but how much time did you spend in it? From the moment you start chasing her right about here, you spend almost two full minutes in this chase. You spend almost two full minutes in this chase. Chases and DBD need to be 30 to 40 seconds. If they get like around 50 seconds, you need to start thinking like, hmm. Maybe I need to just kick a pallet or take an injury and then go find somebody else. Especially with Doctor, you could just static blast and find people pretty quickly. You should definitely do that. The fact that you committed to a two minute chase is way above that. <laughs> yeah, today we had a team that at 420 here, like at this part of the game, had all five gens done and three of my hex totems gone. But this team, it's at five minutes and they have one. <laughs> so they are definitely playing super inefficiently. What is this? Why is she just not paying attention? She's just not panning her camera at all. I don't mean this a defense to the people playing this game, but they are not very good at the game. 
The field of view lower? Yes. Yeah, every time I don't see, I, every time I see default field view, like, I do. Like, it's weird. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I, I never know where people go in this. Yeah, having a two minute chase and just still having four gems is wild. Sometimes you're a little too gung ho about the shock therapy. Like, keep in mind, shock therapy, while it's still great to do it to increase madness levels, its main use is to uh, circumvent chase. And you're just kind of like doing it willy nilly when you could just be getting M1s. Like, you could have just hit Adam there earlier, but you didn't. Because you wanted to shock instead. So, you're definitely losing a lot of efficiency in that regard. <laughs> they almost let Michaela die. What the heck is going on? What is this team doing? Truly, sometimes in the match reviews, the survivors beat themselves. If they really do. That's what happened in Croft's Deathslinger match. Like, it was supposed to be a two out, and then they just played the end game the worst possible way they could, and it ended up being a forte. <laughs> Like sometimes the survivors do like like the survivors are just as big as killer as anything <laughs> like legitimately they're almost like they're on your team you whiff a lot high footage. i can see that i remember when i first started you have somebody dead at four gens how does this get down to at least one gen it does get down to one gen holy moly how you have somebody dead at four gens he can't use his power? What causes it, Blaze? When I first started using Shadowborn, back when Shadowborn used to be the field of view, I, I used to do that until I got used to it. Thank you, Gotti. You can swing over this. You don't have to fall and go around. You hear them working on that, Jen? You'll get some nice block value here. Swing over that. If you swing over it the right way on Xeno, you land on the window. You can do this little like foot dance thing. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I've done it once before. It was very cute. Ah! It wouldn't let me. That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, no bugs in DVD. <laughs> That's funny for you to say, because you're you're the you're, you are the biggest bug denier in my chat. A lot of twins phase through a wall, and you'd be like, mm, actually, in 1932, that was well established as an actual game mechanic by Behavior Interactive. That's actually totally normal. <laughs> that was a big swing. Unless you had coup, that was not happening. Okay, but in 1932, it was. <laughs> you were so desensitized. It's, it's funny. It's legitimately funny. It gets a laugh out of me. Yeah, like there, you could just M1 her. Like, why are, why are you trying to shock? Just, just hit her. Yeah, I feel like you're kind of like misdiagnosing the purpose of shock therapy. Also, you just let her have that window for free. You could have just cut her off there. Even if you weren't gonna cut her off, you could shock and keep her at the window and just smack her there, but you just let her go instead. I do that on Doctor all the time. Character, I do that on Dracula too. Any character that's like really tall, but a melee, like killer instead of a range killer, I get really like disoriented. Cause it just makes it strange. Cause you look closer than you are cause you're like looming over him. That happens. The fact that they greed up until the point that you're right there, like literally like, like I said, I don't mean this in any sort of way as a, like a, like a negative on your end as the reviewee. If they don't greed as much as they do this game, like this game's over. 
Like, this is a four out. Like, easy peasy. But for some reason, at every point where they shouldn't have greeted whatever they were doing, whether it was a hook save or a heal or a madness break or a gen, they have consistently greeted everything to the point where they are actively losing their own game doing it. They deserve this. Like, the survivors deserve it. 100%. But like it, they're being themselves, like the Gamora. The survivors are essentially winning the game for you. But you have two K hours, so it's not like these are theoretically like low hour survivors, unless it's just like one guy with a ton of hours playing his low hour friends, which happens a lot. Or backfill, backfill is also a thing. Oh, that's what you thought it was Raddies. Yeah, the reviewee is Mr. Rumble Roses. I think they're only on the YouTube side of things. I don't think they come on the Twitch side. Yeah, they did once. They did last week. They did last week. But I don't. I think they mostly are on the YouTube side of things. No side quest. If you don't know where they are, just side quest. The first review. This is the second. First one was a night review. Yeah, why aren't you using your side quest to find people? Why are you going into a void when you have one gem left? Especially since that gen over there is like nearly done. That is very risky. You don't have time to do this right now. That is not good. You kind of, you, you kind of just gave up that gen, I think. Unless they just don't go back to it. Oh, they're trying to reset. They... Oh, my gosh. These survivors hurt me. Like, they're actively making me upset. <laughs> they're literally, like, if they... Like, it's almost a wrong play simulator. That's so unlucky. Like, that actively is, like... Survivors are playing as bad as they could. She should be. You, you can't get hatch in the void, Sable. You can't get hatch in the. Two K, two K hours, two thousand one hundred to be exact. <laughs> Scooby Doo run. Yep, the minus tier three run. I say this, not lightly. I don't say this lightly, and I don't say this with any like intentional disrespect. I mean this in the best and most objective way I can phrase it. These are probably the worst survivors I have ever seen in a match review. It was almost like they had an open checklist of what should I not do right now? And we're actively going down and intentionally messing it up every step of the way. Like it was almost comical how much they were just like, oh, well, why don't I just do something really risky and greedy for like no reason? <laughs> like. It was unreal. Like they were active. Like if, if you show me this match in any other context, I would assume they were throwing on purpose. And I'm, I'm being serious. I, I would assume that like either this was like an 100 hour game or they were throwing on purpose. Wild. Holy moly. Holy moly. That... That's wild. Um, so, in terms of your main takeaways, you're not off, off, off the hook with this. Um, first main takeaway is a doctor uh, specific thing, is that your static blast is not only meant to increase madness level, but is also your main info tool uh, to find survivors. 
Um, so try to do it in more central areas uh, to catch as many survivors as possible for both of those reasons. Uh, there were a lot of times you used it either in corners or up against walls, and that kind of just cut your power efficiency in half by blocking most of the static blast. So um, make sure you're trying to do static blast in an open area where that full 360 will catch as many people as possible. Um, second thing, also a doctor thing, use your shock therapy mostly as an anti-loop tool. There was plenty of times you would just kind of like static or static block. You would shock therapy somebody like right in front of your face when you could have just gotten the M1 into the chase super quickly but you're kind of like bloating all of your chase time by a lot by for some reason just going for shock therapy over just hitting the survivor um unless they are about to reach a window or a pallet like it, just just hit them absolutely just hit them. i think the third takeaway is that um i think a, you with doctor it kind of almost is tied to the next one or the last one is that like you were just like kicking a lot of pallets and especially with a character like doctor where you benefit so much from like shock therapy people at pallets to prevent them from vaulting and then getting the hit you were just like just shredding through pallets instead of just getting the down which was kind of confusing to me um i definitely think it was because you had thwack and you were just really really desperate for thwack value so you were just like must get thwack must get thwack must get thwack and just like not thinking about like how you could have just gotten them down earlier um so like i said probably take that off because not only is it not really synergized with your your character but it also uh was giving you a really really bad habit of kicking pallets over just doing shock therapy having them not be able to wall and just downing them instead um fourth main takeaway is that you should definitely shorten your chase time i know a lot of it we talked about like shock therapy using shock therapy unnecessarily but you you spent almost two full minutes in a chase and that is way 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 too long way way too long i cut down in chase time